Hello everybody, today we're going to be making clear toy candy, which is a type of hard candy made with antique metal molds. The tradition of clear toy candy started in Germany, England, and Scotland, and made its way over to the United States with German settlers who settled primarily in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area. These colorful little candies were given as Christmas gifts to children throughout the 1800s. In case you're wondering why we're making candy on a channel called Bikes, Trikes, and Razors, well, just take a look at this giant oversized candy mold. It is a beautiful mold of a rabbit riding a bicycle, and this would have made a spectacular Christmas gift to someone in the 1800s. Most of these molds are made of an alloy of tin and zinc called composition, but some of the earlier ones are made out of cast iron. I found this guy on eBay and there are quite a few of them online and you can also find them in places like antique malls and swap meets. A typical toy candy mold is about half the size of this one and can make usually about three candies at one time. And this is very important, a candy thermometer. It's an absolute must. Temperature is critically important when you're making candy. They're not very expensive, I think I paid $10 for this one. The recipe I'm using is really simple. Two cups of sugar, one quarter a teaspoon cream of tartar, and two thirds a cup of water. Some recipes call for corn syrup and I've tried that but it's a little smarmy tasting. I prefer not using the corn syrup. Now this is the hard part just because it requires patience and that is you have to start on a low to medium heat and you have to slowly bring the mixture up to 310 degrees, which is the hard crack temperature for candy once it cools. So you just slowly keep stirring, and here you can see on the thermometer, soft ball, firm ball, hard ball, soft crack, and at 310, hard crack, these are the different levels of firmness once the sugar mixture cures. And again, we're shooting for 310 and the hard crack temperature. While we wait for the sugar mixture to heat up, it's time to put some olive oil on the inside of the mold so the candy doesn't stick to the mold. Now this mold I know I've had problems with in the past with the rabbit's ear and it has lots of little uh, details in there so you have to make sure you get the olive oil everywhere otherwise you're going to have a hard time getting it out of the mold. Now a regular toy candy mold which is much smaller than this has, usually has a lot less detail you don't need to use nearly this much olive oil and it's a much quicker process to uh, just put a little bit of oil in there to make sure the candy doesn't stick. Here I'm going to make sure I get olive oil in the ear area on the mold because I know I've had problems with that in the past. Now the only thing left to do is to put a rubber band around the mold to hold it together while you pour the candy in. A typical toy candy mold is flat on the bottom so you can just put it on a counter and you can pour the mixture into it. This is not so I had to balance it on a milkshake cup which makes it a little more interesting. And here is our mixture coming to a boil. I'm going to add a little food coloring, a little green food coloring to make it more festive. You can add whatever kind of food coloring you like. You can also add flavoring like cinnamon oil. I've done that before and it's excellent. You can see here the mixture starting to thicken up as it heats up. And again, you want to heat this up slowly. You don't want to overshoot your temperature. Wow, look at how pretty that is. It's hypnotic. Now take a close look at this beautiful green color because you won't be seeing it again, unfortunately. Uh, we heated the mixture up too fast and it started to burn. So instead of this beautiful emerald green, we got a clear amber color, which is burnt sugar. So uh, it still works, but it just doesn't taste quite as good. Now here we are pouring the mixture, and again you can see no longer green, now it's a brown color. Nice and burned, mmm. <laughs> now you gotta be really careful with this stuff too because it is hot, and not, and not only is it hot, it's really, it's lava hot, so be very careful with this. Also. It tends when it gets on stuff, very difficult to get it off. You, it comes off like it comes off the pan and your utensils. 
uh, just by running hot water over it. So that's not a problem, but you really just don't want to get it everywhere because it's just such a pain to clean up. And you can see here all the air escaping from the top of the uh, mixture. Air bubbles really don't seem to be too much of a problem for me with these molds. With a typical small size toy candy mold, you really only have to wait about six to 10 minutes for the uh, mixture inside to harden. This is a much larger mold and uh, takes a lot longer to cool down. It took about 25 minutes for this to start to harden up. And I actually might have overshot a little bit here on the time because I'm having a hard time getting it open. If you time it right, it's not too hard to get the mold open. You just need to pry it a little bit with a knife. There's always a certain amount of anticipation here because you never know if it worked out or not until you see the finished product. And uh, let's see. Little elbow grease. Here it comes. Ah. And it looks like it worked. Even the ears worked. Beautiful. And here you can see a close-up of the really nice detail on the rabbit and the bicycle. Obviously an old safety bicycle from around 1890. And uh, if people were looking at it today, they'd say, uh, guy looks like he's pretty hip because he's got fat tires on there. So uh, let's see. Yeah, you can see this still, it's still soft to a certain extent. And that's not too bad because uh, sometimes it helps you get it out of the mold and then you can always just bend it back to where you want it to be. There, out it comes. And you can see there's like some flashing around the edge of the rabbit and the bike. That can just, that breaks off really easily. That's not a problem. And it's still fairly pliable. There you have it. Yeah, see, still bending, still a little warm. And what great detail on that rabbit. And uh, yeah, like I said, probably a gravel bike because of the fat tires. Oh, wait a minute. There are no disc brakes on there. This guy's a Fred. Yeah, even though we didn't get the green color, it's still a beautiful amber. It looks like, uh, like blown glass. And there you have it, a beautiful and rather large example of what would be a typical Christmas present in the 1800s. Slightly burnt, but still tasty and still beautiful. Thanks for watching everybody and everyone out there have a happy holiday season and we will see you soon. Bye bye.